Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, and um, I thank you that you have given us the ability to live on earth, Lord, and I pray that you help us and cover us under your blood, keep us away from any dangers that may be around us, Lord, and I pray that you help us to do all the good stuff that we can and help us control ourselves. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 10. That same day Nadab and Abihu, Aaron's sons, took their censers, put hot coals and incense in them, and offered strange fire to God, something God had not commanded. Fire blazed out from God and consumed them. They died in God's presence. Moses said to Aaron, this is what God meant when he said, to the one who comes near me, I will show myself holy before all the people. I will show my glory. Aaron was silent. Moses called for Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Uziel, Aaron's uncle. He said, come, carry your dead cousins outside the camp, away from the sanctuary. They came and carried them off outside the camp, just as Moses had directed. Moses then said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, no mourning rituals for you, unkempt hair, torn clothes, or you'll also die, and God will be angry with the whole congregation. Your relatives, all the people of Israel, in fact, will do the mourning over those God has destroyed. And don't leave the entrance to the tent of meeting lest you die, because God's anointing oil is on you. They did, just as Moses said. God instructed Aaron, when you enter the tent of meeting, don't drink wine or strong drink. Neither you nor your sons, lest you die. This is a fixed rule down through the generations. Distinguish between the holy and the common, between the ritually clean and unclean. Teach the people of Israel all the decrees that God had spoken to them through Moses. Moses spoke to Aaron and his surviving sons, Eleazar and Ithamar. Take the leftovers of the grain offering from the fire gifts for God and eat beside the altar that which was been pre- that which has been prepared without yeast for it is most holy. Eat in the holy place because it is your portion and the portion of your sons from the fire gifts for God. This is what God commanded me. Also, you and your sons and daughters are to eat the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution offering in a clean place. They are provided as your portion and the portion of your children from the peace offerings presented to the people of Israel. Bring the thigh of the contribution offering and the breast of the wave offering and the fat pieces of the fire gifts and lift them up as a wave offering. This will be the regular share for you and your children as ordered by God. When Moses looked into the matter of the goat of the absolution offering, he found that it had been burned up. He became angry with Eleazar and Ithamar. Aaron's remaining sons and asked, why didn't you eat the absolution offering in the holy place since it is most holy? The offering was given to you for taking away the guilt of the community by making atonement for them before God. Since its blood was not taken in the holy place, you should have eaten the goat in the sanctuary as I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, look, They sacrificed their absolution offering and whole burnt offering before God today. And you see what has happened to me. I've lost two sons. Do you think God would have been pleased if I had gone ahead and eaten the absolution offering today? When Moses heard this response, he accepted it. Leviticus chapter 11. God spoke to Moses and Aaron. Speak to the people of Israel. Tell them of all the animals on earth These are the animals that you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a split hoof divided in two 
and that eat that chews the cud, but not an animal that only chews the cud or only has a split hoof. For instance, the camel chews the cud but doesn't have a split hoof, so it's unclean. The rock badger chews the cud but doesn't have a split hoof, and so it's unclean. The rabbit chews the cud but doesn't have a split hoof, hoof so is unclean. The pig has a split hoof divided in two but doesn't chew the cud and so is unclean. You may not eat their meat nor touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. Among the creatures that live in the water of the seas and streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales. But anything that doesn't have fins and scales, whether in seas or streams, whether small creatures in the shallows or huge creatures in the deeps, you are to detest. Yes, detest them. Don't eat their meat. Detest their carcasses. Anything living in the water that doesn't have fins and scales is detestable to you. These are the birds you are to detest. Don't eat them. They are detestable. Eagle, vulture, osprey, kite, all falcons, all ravens, ostrich, nighthawk, seagull, all hawks, owl, cormorant, ibis, water hen, pelican, Egyptian vulture, stork, all herons, hoopoe, bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are detestable to you, but you can eat some of these, namely those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. All locusts, caddids, crickets, and grasshoppers. But all the other flying insects that have four legs you are to detest. You will make yourselves ritually unclean until evening if you touch their carcasses. If you pick up one of their carcasses, you must wash your clothes and you'll be unclean until evening. Every animal that has a split hoof that's not completely divided or that doesn't chew the cud is unclean for you. If you touch the carcass of any of them, you become unclean. Every four-footed animal that goes on its paws is unclean for you. If you touch its carcass, you are unclean until evening. If you pick up its carcass, you must wash your clothes and are unclean until evening. They are unclean for you. Among the creatures that crawl on the ground, the following are unclean for you. Weasel, rat, all lizards, gecko, monitor lizard, wall lizard, skink, chameleon. Among the crawling creatures, these are unclean for you. If you touch them they are when they are dead, you are ritually unclean until evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, it becomes unclean no matter what it's for, whether it's made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth. Put it in the water, it's unclean until evening, and then it's clean. If one of these dead creatures falls into a clay pot, everything in the pot is unclean and you must break the pot. Any food that could be eaten but has water on it from such a pot is unclean and any liquid that could be drunk from it is unclean. Anything that one of these carcasses falls on is unclean. An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. They're unclean and must be treated as unclean. A spring though, or a cistern, for collecting water remains clean, but if you touch one of these carcasses, you're ritually unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a carcass falls on it, you must treat it as unclean. If an animal that you are permitted to eat dies, anyone who touches the carcass is ritually clean until evening, I mean unclean until evening. If you eat some of the carcass, you must wash your clothes and you are unclean until evening. If you pick up the carcass, you must wash your clothes and are unclean until evening. Creatures that crawl on the ground are detestable and not to be eaten. Don't eat creatures that crawl on the ground, whether on their belly or on all fours or on many feet. They are detestable. 
Don't make yourselves unclean or be defiled by them, because I am your God. Make yourselves holy, for I am holy. Don't make yourselves ritually unclean by any creature that f crawls on the ground. I am God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Be holy, because I am holy. These are the instructions on animals, birds, fish, and creatures that crawl on the ground. You have to distinguish between the ritually unclean and the clean, between living creatures that can be eaten and those that cannot be eaten. Amen. Amen.